Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Sechas Pesachim Daf Samache is the last DAF in the fifth parak of Pesachim Tamed Nishchat, and it begins the Mishnah of the sixth parak Eilud Varim. Interestingly, the topics are related. The end of Tamed Nishchat is describing. The avoda of the carbon pesach, what the Kohanim used to do. The Gemara will discuss the shifts of the Yisraelim who brought their carbon. The Gemara will discuss the fact that we said in the Mishnah that the Chachamim were not happy with the fact that some Kohanim would uh, flood the Azara in order to clean it. The Gemara will explain why they weren't happy and what there was to not be happy about. Then the Gemara goes on to the Halacha that they scooped up a cupful of blood. The Gemara will describe what the purpose of that cup was, what they did with it. The Gemara will have two kashas on it, and then the Gemara will discuss how the Kahanim avoided getting the hems of their big day kahuna dirty from the blood swishing around on the floor. And then we will begin the new parak, which discusses which halachos one is permitted to do in the carbon Pesach when it falls on Shabbos, when Erev Pesach falls on Shabbos, and which halachos one is not permitted to do. It's a lengthy Mishnah, which extends deep into the next stuff. Okay, so let's begin the daf. First of all, we had seen in our most recent Mishnah that there were three groups of Jews. Says the Gemara, the last group was called the lazy group. The Gemara says, what's lazy about them? They had to be a third group. You couldn't fit. We have a halacha that there has to be three groups. Somebody had to be in the third group. The Gemara says, still, the individuals who were left for the third group should have pushed forward earlier. They're called the lazy group. Just because we needed three doesn't mean that they weren't lazy. And it's very similar to something which we have said that there are... we. The world needs people who deal with sweet-smelling spices and people who deal with tannery, and that uses foul-smelling chemicals. And praiseworthy is he whose business involves sweet smells and not whose business involves foul smells. It's still good for him, even though the job of the bad smell has to be done by somebody. Similarly, the world needs boys, the world needs girls. Lucky is he whose children are boys instead of just girls. Okay, going further, the Gemara had said that the Mishnah had said that on Shabbos they would uh, not be happy that the Kohanim would wash the floor of the Azara. And how did they wash the floor? Like we said, there was a stream of water that flew that flowed through the Azara. They would stop up the hole in which it left. That would cause it to build up and uh, flood the floor of the Azara. Then they would release the hole and it would all wash the it would it would all wash downstream out of the Azara. But washing the floor, the Chachamim weren't happy with the concept of washing the floor. So the Gemara says, who are these Chachamim? What exactly is the problem with washing the floor? So the Gemara says it's, there are three opinions here. The Gemara says it's Rabbi Eliezer, the Rabbanon, and um, Rabbi Nasan. So the Gemara first wants to say that this is Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer is the one who says that uh, washing the floor on... Uh, Shabbos is an Iser Da'iraisa, and therefore to do it in the Beis HaMikdash uh, for the carbon Pesach is might technically be permitted if it's needed for the carbon, but the Chavim weren't happy about it because it's not really needed for the carbon. But it's not the Rabbanon because the Rabbanon hold that washing floor is, only, is always only an Iser Da'arbanon, and there's never any Iser Da'arbanon in the Beis HaMikdash. Says in the third opinion, there's Rabbi Nasim who says that it's Iser Da'arbanon, but still the Rabbanon weren't happy because you're not supposed to do even Iser Da'arbanon in the Beis HaMikdash unless you need to, and they didn't really need to do this. They could have left it the way it was. What are, where do we see these opinions? So the more quotes of Machag is Rabbi Liezer and the Chachamim. It's a Brisa. The Brisa lists six halachos. Three of them, everybody agrees, is an Iser Da'araisa, and that's part of the cheese-making process. Milking a cow is an Iser Da'araisa. Solidifying the milk, the Aruch learns that's making it into butter. Rashi learns that that's a, a thickening of the milk in order to become cheese. And then there's uh, Megabin, where you actually take the bits of um, solid cheese and clump it into one lump. All these things are an Iser Da'araisa. Rashi explains what they are told us are. Now, there are three other malachas, which is a machogus, and that is machabet, that's sweeping, marabet is sprinkling uh, uh, water on the floor in order to settle the dust, and the roide, which is taking honey off the honeycombs. All these things are nesed Uh All these things are machogus, whether it's nesed araisa or nesed arabanan. Rabbi Yeleza says it's nesed araisa. The Chalam say it's nesed arabanan. It's a gzera. If you do that, you may end up smoothing the floor, and that would be nesed araisa. So, therefore, you have... The two opinions, Rabbi Eliezer says that cleaning the floor is an Iser Da'araisa, and the Chum say it's an Iser Da'araban. Okay, Rabbi Nasan 
it doesn't get involved in that. Machlekes, he just holds that even an Isra Rabbanan, the Chachamah wouldn't be happy about it in the Mesa Bigdash because he didn't need to do it in a case like this. Okay, further, the Mishnah had said that they would scoop up a cupful of blood from the floor of the Azara and they would put it on the Mizbech. What was the point in that? So the Gemara says this was Rabbi Yehuda who said this, and the reason for it was that there's concern that we may have missed the blood of a carbon. Maybe some carbon had its blood splashed on the floor and nothing of it got on the Mizbech. In order to be machshir, that carbon, we scooped up a, blo- a cupful of blood. Now that cup had blood from all the commodities mixed together. You put that on the mezbech, we are machshir that. So the Gemara has a couple of questions on this. The Gemara says, first of all, if you're worried about mistakes, so maybe the blood of this carbon was never caught in a klishari. So there was no kabbalah. The halacha is without kabbalah, you can't kasher this at all. So Rabbi Yudha says, no, kabbalah, you definitely have to do. I'm not talking about where we're afraid that the carbon may have been performed without kabbalah. I'm only trying to be machshir kabbalos that had kabbalah, it's just that it was caught in a kli, but then the kli spilled. I'm not referring to blood that spilled directly from the animal's neck onto the floor. So Gemara says, well, how are you supposed to know if there was Kabbalah or not? So Rabbi Yudha says, listen, we're going to assume that Kabbalah was always done properly. The Kahanim were Zrizim. The Kahanim made sure to do the job right. Gemara says, well, if there were such Zrizim, so why are you afraid that they spilled a whole carbon's worth of blood on the floor? Gemara says, well, there was Zrizim means that they moved around quickly and therefore it could be that something spilled. But they definitely were careful to do Kabbalah. That for sure happened. Okay. Now the Gemara's next question is, but hold on a second, you're scooping up a cupful of blood. A lot of that blood is going to be dam tamtsis. There's two types of blood. There's the blood that squirts out with force from the animal's neck. That blood is what the Gemara calls the blood that has the nisham, it has the life force of the animal. And then after the main squirt, it begins to dribble out. That blood is called dam tamtsis. The Gemara holds that that is not the main blood of the animal. That is not the life force of the animal. So the Gemara says like this, the dam tamtsis can't go in the mezbech. It's possible for the mezbech. Now, the, if you have the regular blood, if you have the, the squirting blood, which is supposed to go on the mezbeach, and it's mixed in the vast majority of dam tamsis, then it's batel. The good blood that you need is mixed in the bad blood that you can't use, and the bad blood is going to be mevatel it. It's not kosher to go on the mezbeach at all, and therefore it's going to be mevatel it, it's going to be considered batel, and then the fact that you pour a cupful of it on the mezbeach doesn't help, because it's like it's not there, it's batel. So Gemara tries a few answers here. The Gemara says, well, maybe Rabbi Yehuda holds that Dam Tamsis is kosher to go on the Mizbech. And I would think that that's true because Rabbi Yehuda holds that Dam Tamsis is an Isikores. We know that it's usher for a person to eat blood. And uh, the blood that it's usher to eat is tied to the fact that then the life force of an animal is in its blood. So uh, there's a Machokis, Rabbi Yehuda Um The Tanakama in Abraisa says that you only get Kores for the Dam of the life force, the blood that squirts. But the dam tamps is the blood that dribbles. You don't get curse for that. That's just a lie. But Rabbi you get curse for both. It sounds like Rabbi Huda holds it. There's no difference between the two. So maybe Rabbi Huda really holds it. The dam tamps is going on the Mizbech. You don't have to worry about it being Mavatel, the rest of the blood. So the Gemara is not true. Rabbi Lezer says clearly that Rabbi Huda holds that you can only put on the Mizbech the blood that squirts, even though the other blood is also... Um, Kores, it's not because it has the animal's life force, it doesn't have the animal's life force, and only the life force blood can go on the Mizbech itself. So the Gemara says, so this Rabbi Huda is not worried about it for a different reason. He holds that blood cannot be Mavatel blood. You can only be Mavatel something with a different material, but if you have two types of blood mixed together, one good and one bad, they're not Mavatel each other. And therefore, as long as there's a tiny drop, there's this one cell of kosher blood that squirted, in this cupful, you put it on the Mizbeach wall, that's kosher, and it's good. Now, the Gemara launches into a different subject, but it's based off this. The Gemara says that Rabbi Huda said, I will prove to the Chachamim that I'm correct, that you can scoop up this cupful of blood and put it on the Mizbeach. And the reason for uh, my proof is because they blocked up the exit of the floor, the flowing floor, out of the Azara in order to keep the blood in the Azar. Why do you think they wanted to keep the blood in the Azar? The reason is because they wanted to be able to collect blood afterwards, after the Gemaras were finished, and they wanted to have a mixture of all the blood so they could put on the Mizbeach just in case they missed the blood of one carbon. Just like I'm saying, according to you, that they didn't put any blood, that they didn't scoop up a cupful, why would they have to close off the exit hole for they should let the blood flow out of the Azar? What's the problem? So the Chachamim said, no, there was a different reason. The reason they stuffed up the hose is because they wanted the Kahanim to be walking around, swishing around up to their knees, or up to their ankles, depending on how you translate the word Arkuba, in blood. That's a special praise for the Kahanim to be so deep in blood because of all the Avodah Sakodesh that they are doing. So Gemara asks a couple of questions on this. The Kahanim are, are, are 
walking through deep blood, first of all, it's a chatzitza. The blood interferes between the skin of their feet and the floor of the base of Migdash. We know that they have to be standing on the floor. So Gomer says, liquid's not a chatzitza. Like they have a brisa that says, blood, ink, milk, honey, that are dried are a chatzitza, but if it's wet, as long as it's wet, it's not a chatzitza. So this blood is not a chatzitza until it dries and it wasn't dry. So Gomer says, there's a different problem. It stains the big day kahuna. The big day kahuna have to be clean. And now they do avoda with a stained big day kahuna. So how are they able to do the avoda if they were up to their knees or their ankles in blood? So Gomer says, well, maybe they lifted up the hems of their robes so they shouldn't get dirty. So says, that can be, the halach is that the robes have to be the exact right length, because they're not allowed to be too long or too short, so they couldn't lift them up. So Gomer says, yeah, well, they could lift it up when they weren't doing avoda. Like, for example, when they were bringing the limbs to the mizbeach, the parts of the animal that were burned, that's not avoda. Gomer says, that's not avoda? Excuse me, that is avoda. Probably that's avoda. Only Kahanim were allowed to do that, as we shall see shortly. So it's definitely a voda. Someone says, okay, you're right, that's a voda. But the wood, the wood to put on the fire so that the fire could burn, that wasn't a voda. Someone says, you're right, okay, that's not a voda. So they lifted up the robes when they were bringing the wood. But how does that help? It got, it would, it, it, they had to do other things. They had to walk around to bring the limbs and to bring the blood. So they got dirty then. So uh, the Gemara says they would walk on these protrusions from the walls and from the floor. They would step on those so that they wouldn't get dirty walking on the floor. Okay. Now the Gemara goes back to the last couple of things in the Mishnah. The language of the Mishnah is a bit strange. When it describes how they skinned the animal, they took out the innards, it says that they put it on a tray, lahaktiram, they put the insides on a tray in order to burn them. That sounds like that the Yisrael, who was busy skinning his animal, also put it on a tray like he was planning on burning it on the Mizbech. So the Gemara says you have to adjust the wording over a little. Not that he was going to put it on the Mizbech, but so that it could be put on the Mizbech by the Kohen who was going to come and put those parts on the Mizbech. Okay, next it says that the groups left and they went home. So the Gemara ends off the parak by saying that they wrapped the carbon in its skin and they slung it over their shoulders and they walked home. It says Rav Ilish that they did that like Arab merchants who walk around with sackfuls of materials over their shoulders. That concludes the fifth parak of Mesech of Sachem. Now we begin the sixth which is a mission discussing which things you're allowed to do when Erev Pesach falls on Shabbos, which parts of the malacha of bringing a carbon Pesach are doyiche Shabbos allowed to do them on Shabbos, even though they are in Isser. So the general rules are going to be as follows. There are three types of malacha. Something which you have to do on Shabbos cannot be done earlier or later. That pushes off Shabbos. You're allowed to do it on Shabbos. As the mission will say, there is a Pasuk B'mo You have to do the carbon Pesach in its time. In its time, whether it's a weekday or Shabbos. Now, something which you don't have to do until later, you could that could wait till after Shabbos, that everybody agrees you can't do on Shabbos. It's not a Shabbos. You have to wait until after Shabbos. Something which you could have done before, and you didn't, and now it's Shabbos. You're allowed to do it now. That's going to be a Machokas, which the Mishnah will bring a lengthy conversation between the Tanaim and what they hold. So let's begin. The following things are the Shabbos because you can't do them later. The Shechita, slaughtering the animal. Zrika, the, the application of the blood to the Mizbeach. Mirchei Kravav is squeezing out the uh, refuse from the intestines. If you leave that there until after Shabbos, it'll spoil the carbon. And, of course, burning the fats, the chelev, that you're allowed to do on Shabbos. All these things have to be done that day. can't be pushed off till later. Now, the following things could be done later for sure. Roasting the carbon, washing its insides with water. Those things you can't do on Shabbos. Those things you could wait till after Shabbos, and therefore there's no hatter to do them on Shabbos. Now, the following things you should have done before Shabbos, and the question is, if you didn't, are you allowed to do them now in order to be able to bring the carbon? Um, you won't be able to bring a carbon if you can't do them. So, And they are as follows. Carrying the animal into the base of Migdash, to Rosh Harabim, um, bringing it from outside the Tchum, and cutting off a mum, cutting off a wart that it has. Now, all these three things are an Iser de Rabbanon. Carrying is an, is, is an Iser de Rabbanon because there's no Iser to carry a live creature on Shabbos. It's considered to be carrying itself. Tchumin is de Rabbanon, and cutting off a wart is a way to do it with a Shinoi, either by using your nails or your teeth, so it's only an Iser de Rabbanon. Now, Rabbi Eliezer says you're allowed to do it on Shabbos, Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Yeshua say you're not. You have to wait till after Shabbos because you could have done it before Shabbos. 
Now the Gemara discusses the. Now the Mishnah explains the machogas that they had and the conversation that they had. Rabbi Elazar says, "I'll bring you a kavu chomer. You're allowed to do shchita. Shchita generally is an eser You're allowed to do that. So these things which are eser darbanan, you should for sure be allowed to do." So Rabbi Shua said, "Not necessarily on yom tov, on a standard yom tov, you're allowed a shach that's considered to be food preparation. You're allowed a shach, but you're not allowed to do other isurei darbanan. So why should you be allowed to do these?" So uh, Rabbi Eliezer answered, Rabbi Yeshua, he said, Yeshua, what kind of proof is that? Um, that's for Rishos. That's something which is not a mitzvah. You're not, the Rabbanon made an iser for you to do things which you don't have to do. This is for a mitzvah. Why would the Rabbanon make an iser for you to do something? Um, you're allowed to do shchita. They're going to go ahead and make an iser, make it forbidden for you to do uh, uh, certain things in the Rabbanon, and therefore you won't be able to bring your carbon? That can't be. Where it says Rabbi Akiva got involved, and Rabbi Akiva said, I'll prove to you that it's true. Because let's say somebody is Tame. So he wants to have the blood of the Paraduma sprinkled on him, the water of the Paraduma sprinkled on him, in order that he should be Tahar and be able to bring his carbon. So the Allah is not to do that. It's an Esad Rabbanan. It looks like he's fixing, because he's fixing himself. He's now becoming pure, and he's not allowed to do that. So you see that he's the Rabbanan do apply, even though Shechito, which is an Esad says Mutter, and even though this Esad Rabbanan is stopping you from doing the mitzvah, still it does apply. So Gemara said, Rabbi Leizer said, well, I hold, you're allowed to do that sprinkling. That's exactly my point. I say, I, the same way I say you're allowed to do these other things, I say you're allowed to do that sprinkling. Um, it's all part of the same. If you're allowed to do shechita, you're allowed to violate all these yisurei derabonin in order to be able to do the mitzvah of bringing the carbon. So Rabbi Kiva said, but uh, you're not allowed to. Um... Rabbi Eliezer said, you are allowed to, because the same Kav HaChemer applies. Rabbi Kiva says, I'm going to reverse a Kav HaChemer. You're not allowed to do sprinkling. You're not allowed to do Isure Dirabanon. And if you're not allowed to do Isure Dirabanon, you're certainly not allowed to Shecht, which is an Isur Dairaisa. So Rabbi Eliezer says, what do you mean? Shechita, we know you're allowed to do. That's an f- explicit Pasuk that says, Ben Mayada, you're allowed to do it on the day that you're supposed to do it, whether it's Shabbos or a weekday. Rabbi Kiva says, Aha, now we see why Yikav HaChemer doesn't work. The Torah explicitly tells me you're allowed to do the shechita. Things which you are explicitly where which you can't do any other time, you're allowed to do. Things which you could do a different time, those you're not allowed to do. All these other avodos which you are uh, saying they should be allowed to do could have done a different time. There is no moed. There is no moedoy. Moedoy you're allowed to do even if it's Shabbos. Right, that means in its time. These things don't have an its time. Could have been done beforehand. Therefore, there is no Moyadai that says you're allowed to do it. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzhak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.